Hi folks, and thanks for joining me here this afternoon so that we can talk about our latest friend, the trapezoid. I'm sorry I couldn't be here to meet with your class this afternoon, but we're going to do the next best thing. So I have in front of me my bright lime green uh, quadrilaterals note sheet. You want to have yours as well. So if you don't have yours, pause the video for just a minute while you dig it out of your backpack. And once you've got yours, let's go ahead, let's flip that bad boy over to the back side. And I'm going to scoot all the way down to the bottom so that we can talk about our two remaining quadrilaterals, the trapezoid and his brother, the isosceles trapezoid. So what is a trapezoid? This is kind of an interesting question because if I had asked this question a few years ago, the answer would have been different than how we define the trapezoid today. So today in our course, we are going to define a trapezoid as a quadrilateral that has at least one pair of parallel sides. And again, if you Google this, you might find something different because the way that we defined this a few years ago was different. But again, for us, it's going to be a quadrilateral with at least, so that means it might have one pair, but it might have two, two pairs. And those parallel sides are called the bases of the trapezoid. So if I think about what that might look like or might mean, I've got one pair of sides that's parallel for sure, and a second pair of sides which may or may not be parallel. So again, these parallel sides are called bases. The second pair of sides are always called the legs. I'm going to label this bugger as my trapezoid. An isosceles trapezoid, on the other hand, is going to be a trapezoid that has base angles that are congruent. So let me go ahead and get that definition in there and then we'll talk a little bit more about what base angles are and where we find them in the trapezoid. And this definition too, if you Google it, might be different because if you had taken geometry with me 10 years ago, this is not how we would have defined the isosceles trapezoid. So here are my bases that are parallel. My base angles are going to be the angles that are formed where the leg meets the base. So I have one pair of congruent base angles up here where that top base meets the leg. I have a second pair of congruent base angles down at the bottom where the leg meets that second base. And again, I'm going to label this bugger as the isosceles trapezoid. All right, so he's a little bit more challenging to talk about just because we have some more vocabulary that goes along with him. You want to make sure you really have a good handle on where the bases are located in the trapezoid, where you would find the legs in the trapezoid, and where you would find the base angles in the trapezoid. 
So again, those three vocab words are going to be really super important for today. All right, next up on the agenda is we are going to go back into GeoGebra. And remember, if you need that link, that link can be found in Teams. And what we're going to do is fill out or finish filling out our chart. We're going to fill in each of the properties for the trapezoid in the isosceles trapezoid. When you are done, I want you to jump into the notes section in the class notebook and check your answers. That's really important. We're going to make sure that everybody's on the same page. And I'll put a copy of the answers in the class notebook. We're going to be using this sheet for reference today and all next week, and we want to make sure that the data that we have on the sheet is as accurate as we can possibly make it. Um, so again, do take the time to check those answers in class notebook. So rest of class today, you'll do the exploration in GeoGebra. Once you're done doing the exploration in GeoGebra, you'll check your answers in the class notebook. Then you can proceed on to doing the practice problems, which you can find in your calendar for today. And your only homework for tonight is to finish up whatever of the practice problems you don't finish during class today. All right, so I'm sorry I miss seeing you folks in class today. Um, you can always email me if you have any questions. You can always post a question in Teams and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions if you have them because that's how we grow, that's how we learn, uh, and that's how we get smarter is having those questions answered. Uh, as always, folks, my thanks in attending and watching the video. It's appreciated more than words can possibly say. Have a great rest of your day.